Ever since I started playing with electronics, I was fascinated by one very specific chip, the 80 Tiny 85. I know, I know, it's not the fastest microcontroller out there, nor it is the best, but being so small and requiring no extra components for it to work is what makes it so interesting to me. I've used it before, both for projects on the channel where I've made an automatic vacuum switch for my workshop, and for a personal project as this toothbrushing timer that I made for the kids. But I never really gave it a better chance for proving itself, so today that's all about to change. A while ago I made a video that was the trigger for all of this. In that video I made two Arduino Nano boards talk to each other via I2C on a parent-child relationship in an attempt to free the parent aka main Arduino from certain processing tasks. The benefit of that approach is that now the child Arduino can handle a single or multiple repetitive and highly CPU intensive job while the main board will be left free to handle the rest of the functionalities and only provide instructions to the child Arduino. This all worked beautifully, but what I wasn't able to accomplish at that time is to use an 80Tiny85 for the child controller, because the I2C communication and the dimmer module required pin 7 to be used for different purposes at the same time. That is still an issue, but it sparked the idea for what I now call the a tiny device. To design this board, I used Altium Designer. Altium Designer is your best choice when it comes to PCB design, where they provide all the necessary tools for all of your ideas. Schematic capture, high speed, rigid flex, ADI, they have it all. And on top of that, you can collaborate with multiple people at the same time to bring your ideas to life. A critical feature for the current state of the world that we are in is their manufacturer part search where you can see directly the stock available for the selected parts and base your design decisions on that. This alone can now be a decisive factor if your project can leave the design phase or get stuck due to the shortage of components. At the moment, Altium provides a free trial to all of my viewers where you can test the software for free, so check out the link in the description. So what is in a tiny device? Well, the short answer is that I don't know. The board is designed to serve as a carrier platform for projects around the ATA Tiny 85, where it directly exposes the power pins and the I2C pins to a header on one side. What it can be though is entirely on your imagination. For me, this board can be a mood or a status lamp, it can be a light sensor or it can be a controller for an addressable LED strip. Basically, this board can be turned into whatever device that you can think of. Relay timer control? Of course. In fact, let's build one now so you can see how this a tiny device board is converted to an actual a tiny device. But before we jump into soldering, let me tell you about the manufacturer of this board, PCBWay. I've been using PCBWay for a while now to manufacture my prototypes and I cannot be happier with them. They have awesome build quality, fast turnaround and a lot of options to choose from. Right now they run their Christmas sale where you can win a ton of coupons, win some gifts or get your project manufactured for some really low prices. Check the link in the description for more details. The device that we will make now is a relay timer. The relay timer will be controlled by I2C, so whenever we send a specific character to it, the device will turn on the relay for a set period of time. Think of it as a stereo light controller maybe. Different floor sends out a different code and based on that code the light stays on for a different duration. Or as a controller for some mixing machine that needs a specific amount of water for the recipe that it currently makes. By sending a specific command, the relay will be on for a specific amount of time and deliver the right water volume. In the meantime, the main board can continue doing whatever it was doing before in a set and forget style well, the 80 tiny 85 does the needed counting. To start assembling, what we first need is this board that I designed and for that you have three options. Option number one is that you build it yourself from a perf board as I did while testing the design. Another option is to buy this board from me as I've listed the board for sale on my Tindy shop that I just opened. The link is in the video description. If you choose to buy it, thank you. The money goes into growing the channel where they allow me to make better projects and better videos as well. The third and final option to get this board is to leave a comment down below the video indicating that you want one and I will select 5 people that will receive the board for free. Next, 
you will need an 8-pin IC socket, an 80 tiny 85 microcontroller, a 4-pin male header, and a 6-pin female header. Additionally, you will need a relay module and a spare Arduino Uno for programming the 80 tiny 85. We can start by first soldering the IC socket after we have aligned its notch with the notch on the silkscreen. Since the 80 tiny 85 needs to be programmed, it is necessary that we are able to remove it from the board and the IC socket gives us the perfect option for that. After the socket, we need to solder the pin headers from where we will connect the I2C control and power on one side and the relay module on the other. Since the pin headers on the relay stick up, I'll solder the female headers upside down so we can then directly plug the relay into it. This specific relay module can be controlled both with high and low signals. I'll be using the low input signal as per the installed jumper, but since we will connect the relay to a pin header, we need to replace that jumper with a solder bridge on the header. If you want to know more about relays, I have a dedicated video that you can check. To power the relay, we will use jumper wires to solder the VCC and ground connections to the provided pad on the Atini device PCB. Finally, we can connect the middle pin on the header with one of the Arduino pins and our Atini device will be ready to get programmed and receive its brains. With the device ready, we now need to work on the code that will control it. There are many ways that you can program an AT Tiny, and to be honest, they are really beyond the scope of this video. I'll leave some links down below where you can get full instructions, but to summarize, you can program a specific sketch onto an Arduino Uno to make it a programmer, and use that Uno to then program the AT Tiny by connecting it as shown on the screen. In the past, I've built a dedicated programmer on a perf board, but subscribe, and maybe we can build a better one in the future. What is really important now for our device is to get its brains. In a nutshell, we need code that will turn this into an I2C device that we can then connect to the main project. Since the main project is relatively irrelevant for our demonstration, I'll use an example sketch that allows us to send data over I2C from a serial monitor of the Arduino IDE. With this sketch, anything that I write inside the serial monitor will be then sent to the Atini device and we can then observe how it changes and behaves. Links to all of the sketches, libraries and everything else related can be found as usual in the video description. Now let's focus on the actual device code. To be able to run this device as an I2C slave device, we need a library from no other than Rambo himself. No, no, not that Rambo, a fellow maker Rambo that was kind enough to share his work. So, we now first include the library in our sketch, and we need to initialize it with an address at which we want our device to be discoverable. This address needs to be in the range of 0 to 127, and it also must be unique for the device for the project. You cannot have two devices in the same project that share the same address. Since this is our only device now, we can choose any address that we want, so I set the address to 13 in the sketch setup function. What we also need to set up here is the callback function that will be executed whenever we communicate with this device. This is done by using the onReceive method from the library, where we specify the name of the function that we want to be executed once communication is detected. The important thing about this function is that we always need to keep it as short and as simple as possible. The I2C protocol relies on precisely time communication that we can mess up with if we try to put our device logic here. Instead, in this function, we only receive and store the external data and we can then act against it in the main loop function of the sketch. Now, in the main loop of the program, the very first thing that we need to do is to call a specific function that is defined in the TinyWire library that will make sure to send out the correct stop signal to the I2C communication. Since the ATtiny85 has very limited resources, one of the drawbacks is that in order to have reliable I2C communication, we are not really allowed to use delays in our code. Any waiting that we need to implement, we need to get creative and implement it differently. Since we are building a relay timer, our delay is implemented by using the millis function. This function returns the elapsed time in milliseconds since the Arduino was started. We can use this value to add a number to it so we can define a point in the future that we want an action to take place. So, whenever we detect that we have received a new state from the main board, 
we check its value and add different delays for each. For example, if the received value is 1, we add 2 seconds of delay, and if the received value is 4, we then add 10 seconds of delay. Next, we can check the value of this time, and if that time is into the future, that means that we now need to turn on the relay and keep it on until we reach that point in time. Once the current milli surpasses the set point, we can then turn off the relay until the next command is received. With the addition of the default case in the switch command, where we check the state, we can also send any undefined character as a command to the board to terminate the current timing. So, for example, if we set a timer for 10 seconds by sending 4 to the tiny device, after a second or so we can then send 0 to reset the timer and turn off the relay immediately. Now that we have a device that can interact through I2C with Arduino, this can be expanded to all sorts of other projects and boards like the Raspberry Pi for example. With it we can build all sorts of sensors for a relatively cheap price as the ATtiny85 is also a very cheap microcontroller. Before the current chip shortage that we are in, it could have been bought for prices at around 50 cents per piece. It now costs more than that but I'm sure that prices will go down once manufacturing settles in. To bring this project to the next level, I would like to ask for your feedback. If you have any idea how we can turn the 80tiny85 to an tiny device to build any sensors or project that you might have in mind, then feel free to leave a comment down below. I do have a few of my own, so subscribe to see them built, and I can't wait to hear all your feedback about what we else we can build with this board. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.